Hey everybody, it's Devin Francis, also known as a Leonard Monster. And me. And you're watching episode 125 of the Adventures in Odyssey Oddcast. A prime cube. Or a perfect cube, I should say, rather. It's exciting. So, news announcements. announcements. Well, what are we doing today, Victoria? There's a big uh, thing to announce we wrote on Facebook, but I haven't said on the video yet. But first, what are we doing? Find a penny? Yes, it's the beginning yeah. of album 63 Yay. reviews. Find a penny, parts one and two. And a, a very topical episode to announce our very special thing that's coming up, which is what, Victoria? We're going to be doing an interview with Kathy Buchanan. Yes. And she wrote to find a penny among yes. tons of other things. Yes. The creator of Mrs. Sutton. And yes. uh, Mitch also, too, I guess. Yeah. Yes, we are going to be interviewing Kathy Buchanan, formerly Kathy Waringa, and that will be happening on September 6th. So please put questions in the comments or on our Facebook page, or you could even send them to our email address, which is in the description, um, which I will even see on time now because I finally set it up properly to forward to my normal email address. I just realized why you made a big deal about me going to have classes in Buchanan on the day we did the interview. Yeah. I, I just figured that out. Although you actually, your first classes are in Buchanan every single day of the week. Yep. Because, you know, you're an English major. Yep. Um, don't tell them where I live, Devin. Jeez. Yeah, as if they don't, we haven't said the name of our very, very small town a thousand times on this podcast. Um... No, so yeah, we're going to be interviewing Kathy Buchanan on September 6th, so please send questions before then. She is like the master writer of Slice of Life in comedy and romance. She was the creator of Mitch, super Mrs. famously. Mrs. Sutton. And Mrs. Sutton. Um, and in terms of episodes this year, she wrote One More Name, parts 1, 2, and 3. And she wrote Find a Penny, parts 1 and 2. And she wrote Crash Course. So... There's lots of good episodes this year for us to be able to talk to her about. It's pretty crazy that in such a short season that she wrote for the album 63, the premiere and the finale, both. I haven't listened to Crash Course yet. Neither have I. I was supposed to do it today because we were supposed to record it today, but no, we're not. So, um, Oops. All, all six episodes aren't out yet, though. Yeah, that's the last one. But, okay, it's Find a Penny, Friend or Foe. That's three. Have a heart. Mm -hmm. BTV Crash Course. And Crash Course. BTV isn't out yet. Yeah, it came out two weeks ago. Two and a half weeks ago. I didn't see it on my OAC app. Yeah. BTV, Revenge, and then Crash Course. The last episode came out this last Thursday. Well. And we're, st mm -hmm. and we're just now putting out the beginning of it, but hey, it's, uh, we did it. It's out there. So, close enough. It and won't let me log into the OAC yeah, on well, my phone. Don't do the it The app right does not work very well. Let me just say that here, because I don't think I've ever said that before. I basically only use the app, and it, it has a lot of glitches. So, yeah, we're doing the interview with Kathy. We're very excited about it. She is a very cool person, very funny person. She's done a lot. She's had a lot of funny stories like the the whole Mitch, the birthday, the wedding cake. Eugene, and between Trina every single cake. person we interview, even if they have nothing to do with the wedding cake, I will piece together every single point of view in that situation. The next people we're going to interview are going to be the people who made the cake. We'll find them. Um... It's Odyssey related, so we can do it. So It'll we're gonna go about as well as your search for the PO box, right, Devin? Yeah, yeah. I mean, honestly, I probably would have kept on doing that again once someone reminded me about it, if that was still actually the mailing address for Focus here. But it hasn't been for like three years now, so. I feel like there's less justification if I call the postal service for them to tell me where it is. You know, so. Oh well. Anyways, let's talk about Find a Penny and we can rant about how much we love Kathy Buchanan a whole lot more. 
because according to the message that we were talking um, when she accepted to do the interview, according to her, she loves the oddcast. So I don't know if she's watching this right now. She might be, which is weird. But uh, let's talk about To Find a Penny and talk about how much we love her writing a whole lot more. So we'll turn you over to that right now. So, Find a Penny Part 1, Episode 825. We're already a quarter of the way through the 800s. That is wild. Damn, uh, this is the first time we've got to see someone's honeymoon before. Eugene and Katrina not counting. Yeah, they had quite a honeymoon. Uh, written by Kathy Buchanan. I can't believe, Victoria. Wooten and Penny are the cutest couple in this series. Oh my gosh. I can't believe it's only been three weeks since their wedding in canon. Because the entire last season happened during their honeymoon. The wedding itself was a whole year prior to this episode in, like, real life. Wellington was here three weeks ago, and he needs to come back right now. It's like, that's so weird in terms of the way they do Odyssey time that they would actually canonically say that the, the finale of the last season was only three weeks before the beginning of this one, when there was a whole season in between. Okay, spoilers, if you have not listened to the episode... Why are you watching cool, this? Go listen to the episode. If you haven't listened to the episode, what are you doing? This is a really good episode. Go. Go. Okay, what happens in the episode, Victoria? Okay, so... Tiny got kidnapped. Oh my gosh, I never thought that, like, out of all the places she would have ended up, Wooten was drunk, and I'm like... <laughs> What? Well, let's, this is going to be so much better than I first let's expected. Let's proceed through well, the episode okay, in order. Penny better be with Wellington and they're having like a sleepover or something like that. And that's why she's not there. And oh my gosh. Okay, so Wooten comes back to Odyssey and it's not like a Eugene situation. He remembers who everyone is, which is really good because it would have been annoying if he didn't. And Yeah, um, we assumed it was like retrograde amnesia yeah. that he had. And so he remembers everything about his life except for he can't remember anything from the honeymoon at all it's like since the day of his wedding yeah and like his last memory is um basically just like chilling with penny and wellington right before uh he left he didn't say wellington the episode i'm adding that because i love wellington for you guys um so he we get to see like all these flashbacks to different moments in his honeymoon as he tries to piece together where he was in the events that occurred and try and figure out where Penny is and we get to see all these things we got and okay I thought we were gonna get a complete version of I'm in the deep end with you and I I was screaming over that and we didn't get a complete version of it. it made me mad there was no water and I was like Pool boys, what what is up with this? And I thought Where's the water, Victoria? Meant, there were lots of different singers, but I guess it's just one singer, and then all the other boys are the people who play the instruments. And I'm like, what instruments? It's people singing in water. I don't. Are the boys the bubbles in the water? What is this? And where's like, the water? Where's the? I was so upset. I was like screaming. I was actually screaming. I was like, "We get a full version of this song. It's been so long." I'm I so excited. did not get a full version of the song. Cut off halfway through. You no, know, I bet. Just has a beautiful voice. I bet the other guy had a beautiful. voice. I bet they're gonna release it at the end of the album when they put out the bonus tracks. I bet there's gonna be one that's full version of the song. I'm making oh, that prediction right that, now. That I makes sense, as actually, they started singing, yeah. I was like, "Okay, one, where's the water? Where it's is like, that water?" The whole point of this band, I. I was like, we know this song, so I'm like, maybe only the... We know that they performed at, like, an aquatic center. Why aren't they using the aquatic center? I was like, maybe only the chorus is underwater. And then they actually sang the line, like, the I'm in the deep end over you, which we know that line's supposed to be underwater because Chris sang it in the wrap-up of Wooing Wooten. Wooten sang it in Wooing Wooten. Yeah. So I'm like, it's we know that line's supposed to be underwater, What's going on? Okay, Devin, Devin, Devin. I think Victoria Jameson would have seen apparently the video with Wooten singing with what the if Victoria Jameson went is the one viral. Who and I totally think either Victoria Jameson like was in the crowd 
but she definitely would have seen it. And she would have seen Moon because he was on the stage and he was talking about he just got married. And I was like, he just broke my heart because Victoria would have seen this video no matter what. And that is so sad to me. Even though I don't ship Wooten and Victoria, I feel really bad for her. I hope she's happy where she is. It's killing me. What if we, if it's still the headcanon we had that Devin and Victoria are siblings with their, no. like, construction no. and Shut breakfast up. cereal empire? What? No. Yeah. No. Yeah. So, like... No. But it's it doesn't make sense because, like, Devin wouldn't want to collude on that because he's too pure of heart and he wants what's best for Penny. <laughs> So I'm so mad that I get like mean characters or you, like characters that are shunned away and you get like a pure angel cinnamon roll. How dare you? Okay. But also Devin was an idiot and very bad at interpersonal relationships. So just like you. Um, <laughs> hey. So yeah. So Wooten comes back. No memory of what happened, which we knew from the album description. You pointed out forever ago, but this is exactly where we insert the Bernard quote. And and they always make the hero lose his memory when they can't think of anything else to do with him. As Victoria pointed out that line during the predictions episode. Uh, I remember doing that, but I'll take credit for it anyway. As, as you pointed out, way more specifically, Adventures in Odyssey is now two for two on having long-term courtships that eventually end in marriage, where we see the whole relationship up until marriage, and then the couple goes on their honeymoon, and then upon return, one of them has lost their memory. And both it's times it's happened. Both times it's happened. This feels like... You know what this feels like? It feels like home part one. It reminds me of the home two-parter. Because, like, like you don't expect back. there to be espionage. You just expect it to be, like, characters come back, and it's, like, nice to see him again, and you're, like, hanging out. And then it's just, like, plot twist! There's crime happening! <laughs> and you're, like, what is this? Okay, it's here's... So that's the crazy thing, though, because it's, like, double plot twist. Because at first we assumed, like, oh... Cause, especially because after Eugene, we assumed, like, oh, it's this malicious, what's going on? Someone, like kidnap penny and you wouldn't has amnesia what happened to him like oh this is all crazy and then we find out like oh penny's fine she's still safe doesn't even realize wooten has gone i guess everything's okay and it was just some happy-go-lucky accident or whatever happened and then at the end it's like nope double plot twist turns out wooten was drugged by an exper like an experimental thing and i'm like and it's like, oh, it's like Novacom all over again. I was <laughs> the really, next Novacom saga. When Wooten goes to the doctor at first, I was really glad that Dr. Graham, who's in this episode, by the way, which was like, it was it really, made me so emotional. It was really sad and weird to hear this episode freshly coming out. For those, as we talked yeah, about. For those who don't know, she just passed away her voice actor. Laurie Tritel a couple weeks ago from when this will come out. Uh, yeah, I was like, it's like. The same thing as when Robin Williams died and when Carrie Fisher died and stuff like that. Like, episode eight is going to come out. She'll still be in it. Robin Williams had, like, three, two or three more movies that came out. He was still in them. I think it was three. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, uh, Dr. Graham, she's, I was like, I'm glad that she's taking this appropriately seriously, given how shows and wit usually treat illnesses and injuries like this. I'm like, ah, that's fine. Dr. Graham is a professional, Devin. Yeah, because she brought it up in the Green She Rangers. has a cool relative with a cool backstory with a cool not mom and she's cool i mean her mom's cool too but yeah yeah um yeah dr graham brought up the exact same thing in the green room conspiracy when he's like can't can't monty come out and we need to do this stuff she's like no he got hit in the head hard enough to knock him out this isn't a tv show that is like a very serious injury like and I was like, thank you. I liked how especially most of the questions and assessments that she did for Wooten, I was able to predict since I recently did my level two OFA uh, occupational break, first aid. Devin. And she was going through the stuff. And I was like, yeah. I, in my mind, I was like, yeah, dizziness, dizziness or nausea, pupil dilation, and like, are they equal and reactive, stuff like that. And she's going through it. And I was like, I was so yeah. worried she was going to say something is like very wrong with Wooten. But then his test came back and he was okay. And I was like... Oh, okay, that's good to know. But then what it wasn't. Really? Um, when, and then it was like, he was drugged. When Wit was talking to Dr. Graham and she's like, well, this is how the memory loss stuff usually works and these are the things we could try and stuff like this. I was wondering why Wit didn't give any indication of thinking about the old memory stimulator program. But then I was like, well, given that one Wooten probably wasn't... Honestly, I think he deleted that program. That's, that's a possibility after uh, but, uh, Dr. What's-His-Face said 
Um, I was like, one... Wooten probably was not the victim of an incredibly dangerous and radically experimental brain therapy. That's what I said back then. Who knows now? Uh, like Eugene was. And also, the memory stimulator program required someone to construct the memories he had to remind him. And there's no one who has any of the missing Wooten Wooten's memories. Wooten's been Armitage shanked. Yeah. He's been shanked. <laughs> he got shanked. He got shanked, Devin. Um, yeah, so I'm like, there's, I guess there's nothing Wit could do with that, even if he still had the memory stimulator program. He has nothing to go off of to help Wooten with that. I, the, so, <laughs> Sorry, I just think the shank thing is funny. It is funny. Um, so you. you mentioned we start hearing these scenes. It was so cool because last album, we pointed out how it's like, oh, it's neat that we've heard like three or four postcards went to different people from Wooten and Penny, and we got to it hear like... It turned out to like be building up to this yeah and i'm like what? you're like it's cool how we've had like three episodes that mention these postcards and we got to hear about these different stories and not only did the postcards as a general thing come into play but the exact specific postcards we heard last season now individually they they were the same I postcards we heard before blew my mind because I remember in. each time we got a postcard, I was like, I wish we could have an episode about this, especially yeah. the pool boys. I was like, I want Wooten to meet the pool boys. I want to see it. And now we get to see it. And I feel like it was built up and I didn't even know what it was building up. Yeah, and it's you such were a like, satisfying payoff. You were like, I wish we had episodes of an album that was just them on the honeymoon because we were just getting these hints from the postcards. And then those scenes mentioned in the postcards last season have now been scenes that we heard. So the first scene. This is good storytelling. The rich lady on the plane. I I just love her so much how like after listening to Penny Wooten talk for six seconds she asked for the drink menu and I was like <laughs> Mood, honestly like... I, I actually thought she was Miss Kramer for a sec <laughs> when she first appeared I was thinking like oh my gosh Miss Kramer got put on a plane the speed next with to which Miss Kramer would pull the emergency cord and like the emergency exits and jump out of that airplane would be unreal oh man <laughs> So, yeah, the ep we start the episode and we think, like, oh, Penny's missing, Wooten's lost his memory. Once we found out Penny is fine and has no idea that Wooten is missing or lost his memory, then things became much more interesting. Mm -hmm. And Because it, it's like, now they just have... It was almost like, um, like the hangover, I guess, where it's like they now have her obliviously obscure and vague clues to go off of from the messages that she's leaving. Have you seen the hangover? I've seen the first one, yeah. Oh, I haven't seen either of them. I was like, uh, it's like from what they I've just, heard, if you've seen the first one, you've seen both of them. I think there's four. There's at least three. Really? I thought there was only two. There's at least there's at least three. three. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. So it's like they just have these little clues from Penny, and I like how she was like just about to give helpful hints, and then she was like, "Oh yeah," and they got distracted, and they're like. <sighs> but the thing is, as unrealistic as things like that may seem crap does like like that does happen yeah in things and it's like why like would it, she think why would she see the it, need to say it it's obvious who knows what's going yeah, on exactly as soon as you want to find out information for something you can never find it yeah um and apparently there was a lot of information to get because wooten and penny went all over the place we knew about london we knew about paris but the skydiving cover that we theorized about when we did our predictions, turns out that's in Nicaragua, which is a very far ways away from London and Paris. That's and like... it's like a really good thing that Penny packed all that stuff. Like, cause Connie was like, why are you bringing a snorkel and stuff like that? And I was like, there's gonna be so much superfluous stuff in this. It's like Eugene and, and like, Flash Flood. No, all of it was relevant. It's like Eugene and Flash Flood. <laughs> If um, Penny has her suitcase, like, in the, in Connie's garage for whatever reason, and not in her and in, Wooten's house, in swept away. they are going to be fine and swept away. Yeah, if we haven't heard part two yet, because this is pre-recorded. Um, ba, ba, ba. By the time you guys watch this, obviously, we'll have heard it, because the episode will already be out. Um, speaking of the skydiving thing, I was like, I can't believe Penny just pushed Wooten out of a plane on their honeymoon. I was like, Wellington's right, she is a gold digger. She married him, and then a week later, she pushed him out of a plane. It's like, man, she did that. Honestly. Do you, think, do you think Wellington would be cool with her pushing him? Wait, why am I asking you? I should just think about it myself. Yeah. I have all the answers about him, don't I? It's true. You are the source of canon. I am the source of canon when it comes to Wellington Bassett. Hit me up with questions. I will answer them. 
Seriously though, if anyone ever wants to ask me anything about Wellington, it was like when you were when you're doing when you're playing shacks in our D and D campaign, and somehow we realized that you'd worked out the dice such that whatever you said became canon automatically. That's what it's like with you and Wellington, <laughs> AJ. It is. Yeah, I played a D&D campaign once where I basically became the game master. Well, yeah, because you came up with the rule like, oh, I can't lie, but somehow that no, accidentally that came to me and though. I can say whatever and now it must be true because I said it. Yeah. And then I, I owned everyone from then on. It was great. So That's me and Wellington. I, I think that Wellington would be cool with Wooten being pushed out the plane by Penny because he really likes Penny and he would probably be like you know what I I believe in Penny she wouldn't let you get hurt and also Wellington would probably be cool skydiving because he he likes fun stuff like that and he would be with Penny pushing Wooten out the plane and being like Wooten go I want to go skydiving you speaking, have to go first. speaking of hurting and or murdering Wooten it's funny because as as because we were going towards the end of the episode and it's clear there's something important is going to happen with this video in terms of like the way the narrative is going. And so since yeah. Penny's like filming Wooten as he's going down, my mind was like, is his chute just not going to open and he's just going to slam into the ground at terminal See, velocity? And when we first saw the album artwork and I said that something bad was going to happen while they were skydiving. Yeah. And this, I was I like, forgot about that, but yeah. I still had that mentality because I thought like, Either um, one of their shoots didn't go off or one of them were blown away from each yeah. other. And then that's why they got separated mind... and stuff. Because I didn't think that they were in Nicaragua. I thought they'd be a little bit closer to Odyssey than that. My mind was in the that States. in cartoonish fashion, Wooten would be able to fall from like 12,000 feet at terminal velocity, hit the jungle ground, and be completely physically fine, except for the fact that now he's lost his memory, and then it's going to be like, oh, and the video will reveal that that's what happened. Turns out that wasn't the case. It's like, okay, so Wooten was intentionally... They just went skydiving normally, and I'm like, that was so much build-up for such a long time, Wooten was and no payoff. intentionally roofied with experimental memory loss drugs. So I'm like, this episode just took a dramatic 90-degree swerve back to where also, it started. Also, can I just say before I forget... That I didn't really know what I was going to think of this episode. I didn't really have, like, especially high hopes. Because I was like, oh, memory loss. It's so overdone. But, like, if I had to describe this episode in one word, I think this is the highest compliment I can give an episode. Is by describing it with the word fun. Because this episode was one of the funnest episodes I've listened to in such a long time. Every minute, I was just, like, enjoying it. Because Penny and Wooten are so cute together, and it was so much fun, like, hearing about all the stuff on their honeymoon. When he was talking and ranting about how much he loves her at the Pool Boys concert, I was like, this is the sweetest thing I've ever heard in my life. And I was like, oh, Victoria Jameson, I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's so <laughs> funny, because you're totally right. She absolutely I am. would have seen that video. I am right. <laughs> But yeah, she, she definitely was seen that, especially since it went viral, apparently. Well, was they, Jason in this episode? They said, they said it only had 625 likes, which isn't oh, very much. Okay, never mind. Um, was Jason in this episode? Yeah, because he was the one who brought the video over, because yeah. he had the postcard yeah. about so the cool I, boys. I want Jason to go all spy on everything and like help. As he does. Wooten get Penny and stuff, and I'm like, uh... Jason better not be like at the end of part two, like, oh, I miss, I miss the spy world so much. I want to get back into this. You know, this. that is an excellent point. Given that Penny's not trying to hide or being hidden by someone, that she's just checked into a hotel somewhere, between Jason and Wit, it should not be difficult for them to have the connections to be able to find out where she, where's the last place that her ID popped up, registered, or where, anything like that. Also, she has like a track my phone thing. So just track her phone. Sure. Imagine like if they spent forever hunting for it, and they're just like, "Why didn't you just track my phone?" And they're like, oh. "Yeah, it's the twenty first century, guys." So wait, is she not kidnapped? She's just somewhere. She's just at a hotel waiting for Wooten because they were like, "Oh, we got." Oh, us. I thought she was kidnapped. No. Oh, they're like, that's oh, we had, she's like, Wooten and I had to get on separate flights, so we're meeting up again today. I'm in my hotel room, I'm just waiting for Wooten, he's going to show up later, and somehow, 
when once Wooten got separated from her, someone drugged him and he ended up at the wrong place and came back to Odyssey. So she doesn't even realize, she's just still on the honeymoon, doesn't realize anything's wrong yet. And they can't even contact her to when, let her know. When was the moment you realized, like, it was going down? Uh, For me, it was... When the blood work I, came back and they're like, there's an experimental memory erasing drug in your blood. <laughs> Well, for me, the moment where I was just like, oh, this is this is going to be a serious, like, two-parter. Well, serious and fun. It it will be more serious than I thought. Um, was when he mentioned the name of the guy who worked at the hotel, and then they looked it up, and they're like, no one works at the hotel with that name. And I was like, what is I happening here? I forgot about that. Here? Like, I was I like, about that. oh right. my gosh, who is this guy? I is didn't this, think like, about one that. Of those You're right. Where I was thinking, because Wooten wouldn't get the name wrong. Wooten doesn't get stuff like that wrong. You are absolutely right. It was probably whoever... Like, yeah, so that do you guy think it's a drugged thing? Wooten, and they're like, you got drugged. I'm like, the guy at the hotel drugged Wooten. Oh my god. That makes so much more sense. Thank you for And that's trying. why I'm worried about Penny. That's why I think that she's going to get kidnapped, because she's still at the hotel in that crazy, like, guy who's totally pinky from waylaid is gonna like kidnap her so, and i'm like oh my god so do you think it's a comic thing like do you think it's like the ties that bind coming back for wooten or something like that i don't think it's a comic fan coming back for wooten but why else would someone do that to wooten i think that they just got caught up in something bigger than either of them because it the fact that you said that the the hotel employee that makes it clear that like there was a premeditated person who was planted to get close to Wooten and Penny I don't think to gain it was their trust and... specifically planted to get close to them for like his power boy or any of his comics or anything like that I think it was just someone needed a person to experiment on who no one would really but if you notice. wanted to do a drug experiment you'd need to follow through on the drug experiment, not give them the drug and then release them. Well, what if Wooten escaped and he doesn't remember it? Maybe. Because I'm thinking, like, someone on vacation, that's the perfect time to get someone. That's true. It's not like... Different country. Um, it's not like you hunt down an orphan and you're like, oh, you have no family, no one will miss you. It, orphans are hard to find. Have you ever tried... <laughs> I have. I mean, I think you just <laughs> go to the orphanage. Shut up, Devin. But um, do you have any idea how long it takes to adopt a kid? Uh, yeah, I do. I'm not saying adopt them. I'm saying time. take them off the streets. But Isn't that your whole point either, here? Either way. This like, isn't uh, Despicable Me, Victoria. Someone on vacation, if like, hang-ups happen with their flights or something like that, that won't be like too unexpected. So like, if they don't get back when you think they'll get back or something like that and that's why i think that penny's in trouble because wooten because penny's the loose end so like if wooten is somewhere penny is the person who would know he's gone she is the person who would know oh him. i see what you mean so i am worried about penny's safety little because... little did they realize that wooten may possibly be the most popular the like literally personally popular individual on the planet with the most yeah. friends yeah there's literally no one else you could take who would have more people who are friends and not just acquaintances who know of him who what would come what? after you what about what no nah, because wooten is wooten though remember i feel like wit has more connections but no wooten i'm not talking about people friends. he knows because then it'd be like oh you take the president everyone knows the president i oh, mean like okay. wooten has like friends who he is friends with yeah, so Barrett wishes else. he had that many friends. Barrett has fake friends, Wooten has real friends. Yeah, like remember for trying out loud, Victoria? Remember how many people came to oh, see yeah, Midsummer Night's true. Dream? <laughs> Enough to fill like a theater's worth of... Yeah. Or a gymnasium. He has a talent in public relations, Victoria. That's what Shakespeare yeah. said. So, yeah. People like you. Okay, <laughs> is he saying people like you? Like people... Um, who are similar to him or people no he's saying people at like people uh have an affinity for you okay because i've like always been confused about <laughs> i never thought about it that way, way before but it. that does make sense because at first i thought it was like for the longest time until i think like the last time i listened to the episode which was probably about a year ago or something i'm not sure that is an understandable um, interpretation where you said people like you because 
he spends a lot of time around Edwin, and Edwin's super snobbish, so mm-hmm. I was thinking people like you, like plebeians or something like that, plebeians, like he's yeah. insulting him. That's and understandable. Instead, he's like, people like you, and I'm like, oh, that could be a compliment, actually, not an insult. I I remember with that episode, first explaining to you what salad tongs are with regards to Wooten saying he could fit a pair up his nose, yeah, and when you first realized what they were, and you this. were like... <laughs> I, I remember, like, you are like, you know those things that didn't sell it? And I was like, no. And then you took me into the kitchen, you pulled them out, and I was like. So, yeah, I I think it's more likely that it's a comic book thing, that they, like, tried to get information out of him and then, like, erase his memory so we wouldn't know that they did it. Uh, no. That makes sense. I personally just think it was wrong person, wrong place, wrong time. Because it just, it makes sense to me that it's, like, this, clearly, whoever they were friends with at the hotel the person pretending to work there or pretending that was their name. Clearly, this is... I mean, it's not like the owner or something like that. It's just someone pretending to be an employee. But no, but you'd need a uniform. It's like Hitman, you know, the other people at the hotel would recognize, like, hey, you don't work here. This is someone who... Hey, you have a barcode on the back of your head. (laughs) That too. Um, It's like this person clearly spent, like, days showing Wooten and Penny around and like investing time into like helping them and stuff like yeah that's the only thing that it's I like clearly I this was a target for that amount of effort this was specifically targeted at Wooten and Penny yeah and the only reason I can think of that is if it was related to comics oh my gosh could you imagine if Wellington's like I wanted you guys to have an exciting wedding so like <laughs> I hired a deep web hitman to kill you <laughs> <laughs> have fun no what or if he was like sorry i i hired this back when i thought penny was a gold digger i forgot completely about it and like yeah now wooten's forgotten completely also, about it too <laughs> speaking of victoria consider this what if it's someone consider. going after wellington or winston and trying to they get... think he's Wooten. That would mean we get more Wellington episodes. I'm always either, up for that. Either they, I mean, it wouldn't make sense if they thought that that was Wellington. But what if they were trying to get Wooten as a hostage to like against Wellington or Winston for business purposes, and then Wooten, uh, like, got away from them yeah. after they drugged his memory, whatever. Yes, and then it turns out that Winston is one of the heads of a company that has like all the names in the branches of the company relate to like big expanses of space and like then oh. they do mind control stuff and it has to do with like making radios out of telephones or something like that something like that and it's it's just with all crazy. microwaves they're making radios out of microwaves no not like no, uncle pete don't explain it to her, Connie. she won't understand didn't get kicked in the head by a cow I, I think it's kind of insulting to Maud actually saying she wouldn't understand it considering she was a psychology major. That's and, like, a how good it point, is. Victoria. To be a psychology major, every time I hear that line since listening to their backstory, I'm like, no, I think she's smarter than you're giving her credit for. I never the thought only about that. The I can like... think of is the fact that like um, she's half asleep or something like that. You phrase an excellent point victoria it's weird because every single time they show mod they always kind of make her ditzy like she gets the fake like raffle thing she's like oh you got mail it looks totally legit and you can hear her like jumping into a swimming pool she's like whippy and then she's like telephones microwaves and then it's just like her backstory she's like i am a psychology major and it's like Two plus two does not equal 16. Here's the thing, Victoria. Some people have skill sets in areas and not in other areas, okay? Nobody's perfect. Some people are good at some things and not good at other things. (laughs) It makes no sense. It bothers me. I'd never thought about that before, and I should have. I think about it all the time. It's really glaringly obvious now that you bring it up. Yeah, I know. It bothers me. It's bothered me for a really long time. The point is... There are a couple explanations for what could be happening here. I'm pretty sure the comics is the most likely explanation, but there's a few things that could be going on. This was a great episode. It was exciting. It was it's fun. so good. They did the amazing thing with the callbacks to the postcards from last season, which was very clever and fun. And I really liked it, and I'm very excited for part two coming out this Thursday. 
uh, and already come out, obviously, for you guys when you watch this. Um, but yeah, so oh, there is it. It's already come out, and I was gonna go listen to it. So Got my hopes up there. Uh, we should talk about part two now. So we'll turn you over to that right now. Find a penny, part two, episode eight hundred twenty-six, written by Kathy Buchanan. Uh, very exciting. Also, I just realized, as I said, episode eight hundred twenty-six, Victoria. If you don't count the old episodes we've reviewed, if you only count, like, the new episodes that we reviewed as they came out, uh, this is the 100th episode that we've done like that. This is the 100th new episode we've reviewed as it came out that wasn't an old episode, because we started with 727, and this is now 826. How's it feel to be 100 episodes older, Devin? Uh, I feel dead inside. I do, too! Twinsies! Okay. Hey. Uh, what happens in this? Kathy Buchanan wrote it. She's doing so good this year with everything. Uh, she's writer, writer of the year right now. Um, what happens in Find a Penny Part 2, Victoria? So, as I listen to this and I listen to other episodes in the album, I realize that every single title in this album name has a double meaning. Yeah, the title! Kind of I was cool. like, that's so clever! Ah, Find a Penny! I was like, Find a Penny! Oh, there's two pennies! And then there's other episodes, and I'll get into that point once we review those other episodes, because Devin hasn't listened to them yet, so I won't say anything else. Um... So in in this episode, we find out that Wooten was definitely beyond a doubt drugged, and it was like Wait a, in a cupcake. Does have thing. a heart involve a stolen, donated heart transplant surgery thing? Is that what it's about? I'm not sure. Okay, anything. go on, go on. Don't spoil it. Maury rips out the hearts of his victims. <laughs> not surprising. <laughs> go on. Um. Okay. So. Uh, Penny actually had the coin. It wasn't Wooten. It was sewn into the hat by that lady on the plane. I think which, you need to like, rewind a bit to the whole coin thing, crazy. Victoria. The what? Oh, yeah. In terms of oh. explaining things. Yeah, so we found out the reason this that ends, they yeah. they pulled a... Has anyone ever seen Night and Day with Cameron Diaz and, like... I have. Tom Cruise? Because it's like... I've seen that movie so many times. I actually really like that movie. I've probably seen it, like, I don't at remember least it very times. well. Um... Anyway, so... It's kind of like the tourist, that, except with an inanimate object, actually. It is. It is a lot like the tourist. That's a good movie. That's a good movie. The tourist is a good movie, especially Angelina, if you rewatch it. Yeah, yeah. I never enjoyed rewatching it as much as I did when I rewatched it with you, because that was actually really funny when we watched it <laughs> yeah, Anyways, together. go on. Go on. Like, he's freaking out this entire time. Go on. Um, anyway, so... In Night and Day, a big point in that is he's, like, trying to smuggle this item through an airport and through all these security things. So he does it by sticking the item in Cameron Diaz's stuff. Spoilers. And then once they get off the plane, he, like, bumps into her and he's like, oh, and then he, like, grabs it and then he takes it away. So, like, the same thing kind of happens in this. They put... That's uh, funny, Victoria. Just that but, I was also reminded of a movie in that exact same fashion. A movie infinitely superior to night and day the greatest movie of all cinema which is home alone 3 which has the exact same plot as this <laughs> a bunch of terrorists a bunch of terrorists steal the motherboard for like oh a sat for like a, a satellite or like a warhead or something like that and they hide it by replacing it with the motherboard for a remote controlled car that this lady bought and then ends up at Alex's house and she like gives it to him for house sitting or whatever, snuggling. Have or I shown you the nostalgia so, critic review for Home Alone 3? I don't think so, but yeah. Okay, that's we're like, going to watch that after this. It's like the worst Home Alone movie, but that's the plot of it. Is these terrorists are trying to break into the house and steal his remote controlled car because they swapped its native control board with a control board that was like for targeting satellites, missiles, whatever. And so, sorry, that's, yeah, go on. Okay, we're going to watch that right after we're done with that. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, uh, so Devin is right. Uh, anyway, there's this, like, really famous stolen penny, um, physical penny, like the coin. It was and stolen so... by the worst named organization on the planet, again? the Victimizers. Yeah, Which totally doesn't name. sound like a comic book bag I, do they totally sound like a real criminal ring <laughs> i think it sounds a lot like that name of the group from um that's what i thought ties the bind yeah ties the bind it reminded me a lot of that but i can't remember what that group's called either because it was a dumb name too it was yeah it was supposed to be like anonymous was the point it honestly as soon as they said the group is called the victimizers i thought this was going to be some like sjw bashing 
thing. It's like, oh, we're victims of it. I thought that's what they were doing with it. I was like, oh, here. It wasn't our avocados. I was like, this is where, yeah, I thought it was going to be some, like, millennial bashing thing. Like, oh, we're victims of everything is beating down on, I'm like, that's where this is going. And then it wasn't. I'm like, okay, so it was just, they are Ever actual criminals. It's I just started, a dumb name. Like, finding over time throughout listening to all this, like, my brother, my brother, and me, and just hearing, like, Griffin freak out about millennial stuff. You saw the, the airplane like, thing, right? So good. Yeah, the airplane thing, and I also, like, saw him talk about the Cars 3 trailer. <laughs> like, I bet this is gonna be, like, millennial bashing. Like, Lightning McQueen is the old generation, the new generation's trying to usurp them, so they gotta, like, get back at the new generation. And Thank I was you. like, oh my gosh, he's gonna be right, isn't he? Thank you, Griffin McElroy, for saving us all. Um, you know, it's funny. He, he is millennial, though, right, isn't he? Yeah, I saw a screenshot yeah. of an article the other day. It's probably pretty old, and it was, like, 25 phrases that millennials use that you that no one else understands. I okay, was like, at oh, my this job, will be good. At my job a couple weeks ago, um, I I work with kids, and there was this event coming up, so parents had to, like, fill out a form or something like that, a permission slip. So then um, the lady filled out for her child and then gave it back to me right after I gave it to her. And she's like, wait, so how will I know if, like, what time the events are at? I was like, oh, what I do is I usually take pictures of forms with my phone so I can just reference it later. And she's like, oh, you millennials. And then she did that and she walked away. And I was just standing there and I was like, okay. And then I walked away. <laughs> I was like, I can't say anything. Speaking of phones, yeah, it was a picture. This article was like 25 phrases. I was thinking like, or it's common sense. That millennials use that no one else understands. No one else, Victoria. The picture contained only the top item on this list, a phrase that only millennials use. P other people, they don't even know what it means. The phrase was, my phone died. And it's like, instead of, and the caption already said, instead of simply saying that their phone's battery has gone, millennials prefer to, what was it? They prefer to, like, indulge their morbid fascination with death by treating their <laughs> phone as a sentient being. I, I honestly, I thought about it. I'm like... I can't think of any other non-awkward way to say that your phone has run out of battery and has powered itself down apart from the phone died or the battery oh died. Oh my gosh. So it's like, like other people who are millennials don't understand that. They have no idea what we mean, Victoria. It's like... Uh, I wish I knew that I like now the, I'm going to have to rethink every time. The, comment, the comment was like, I've never in my life heard someone say my phone's battery has gone, which is what it said in the caption. <laughs> my... The the battery like, my cellular my device has yeah, expired. My cellular device's power source has exhausted its uh, electrical supply, and consequently, the device has turned itself off. Is the, the clearly the problem? Even problems. Eugene says things like, "My phone is dying." <laughs> Anyways, he's, back to find a penny. <laughs> would Eugene be a millennial? I don't think he would be. No, he's too old. Right? No. Yeah, he's way too old. Because he was and Connie are like in their thirties and stuff. I think. Yeah, if you think about when the show started, it's like. I guess they would yeah. be millennials if they were that age now, but if you think of the age they were when the show started, no, they would be like Gen X. Yeah. Um, um, anyways, back to Find a Penny. <laughs> oh, that makes me mad. Millennial bashing makes me mad. I like how the tele or the airplane thing, Devin should post a link of the airplane thing yeah. we're talking about, called it like Griffin's Crusade or something <laughs> like that. At Midnight's a great show. Um, it's actually, it's really uh, funny because that episode... I've never heard of that show until you mentioned it. Um, I'm going to have to... The premise, it's called At Midnight, Midnight with an at symbol because basically it's like you have to come up with better answers than what Twitter comes up with in the span that you have to come up with answers. So it's like oh, audience interaction that's thing. That's cool. So that's like cool. people will tweet answers and the celebrities will come up with answers. Uh, the funny thing is the day that the I... The Achievement Hunter thing? The date, sorry? Are you talking about the Achievement Hunter thing? How strategic? Yeah, they were like, oh, we were supposed, they were like, we're in the shirt because we were supposed, it was Dan and Gavin. We're like, we were supposed to be on At Midnight, but they like canceled on us. And then the next day I saw the video of the McElroy brothers on that. I was like, I wonder if that was the same episode. <laughs> um, um, anyway, so back to topics. Yeah. It's like nine minutes of not talking about this. Um... So now it's kind of a mission to try and find the penny while trying to find our penny. Yeah. And Wooten also says, like, I have a, I have a, like, oh, what does he say? This is a priceless penny that we have to find. He's like, I lost a pre priceless penny, too. And I was like, oh, my gosh. There, there was a lot of sappy moments so in this episode. 
And Wooten's like watching the Pool Boys on repeat video, like with Connie when he's depressed. And I'm like, this would be better if it was underwater. The, okay, so there's a bonus feature they put out um the week after this came I out on the air. It yet. Is it actually underwater? No. They put out the full Darn version it. of the song, which is basically a, all of the audio that we hear in the episode. Uh, and it is Wooten and Lachlan singing together as a duet in the audio. But, like, Jess Harnell's such a good singer. So it's... Even though he was Grandpa Joe in the Tom and Jerry and Willy Wonka movie, and he was also the Candyman. Yeah. And... <laughs> which I can't unhear now every time I watch the video or clips from it. Um, yeah, they, they basically, for the bonus feature, it was all the audio. You, all the audio was already in the episode, but it's, like, just cut together into one song. Uh, still no water throughout the entirety of the piece, and I'm very upset about that. Can I just say, I, um, Tom and Jerry, before I forget to tell you this, I was like, oh, that's kind of interesting that they gave, um, the bad guy, what's his name? Mr. Slugworth. Yeah, Slugworth. His I own always song. forget. I was like, oh, name. that's kind of interesting. And so I actually, like, tried to find the thing of just Slugworth singing, and I couldn't find the whole thing. But then I found the thing of Veruca and him singing in the duet. So I was like, oh, that's interesting. I listened to the full clip. I was like, no, this is actually really bad. Their voices clash so much. Like, it doesn't even work as a duet. Or I want like the that. whole world. I want it all. And I'm like, oh, this is bad. Okay. Um, so. Um, it was a good episode. Is Martin the guy who is from the Green Ring Conspiracy, or is he just an unrelated? I think it was a different, it was a new person. Okay. I wasn't sure, because I was like, there's Martin from Green Ring Conspiracy, but if it was him... Why no, Martin Martin was, episode? like, the deputy or whatever under, like, the, the assistant to Detective Polhouse, so he wouldn't be, like, a national yeah. security guy. See, that's why I was confused, but I, and I was like, he doesn't have the same voice actor either, because yeah. I can remember Martin's voice, and he seems like he's a little bit smarter than Martin, too. Um, when is Polhouse going to be in another episode? I know he's in, like, I think the last album, but I'm like, I need him back because he's also Leonard, and he's like, great. I need him to interact with Buck more because this is the closest I'm gonna get to Leonard and Grandpa, Buck. Grandpa, Grandpa, grandson interactions. If Buck ever accidentally calls him Grandpa, I'm gonna cry out of happiness. <laughs> um. So the episode starts off, and it's it's exactly what I was talking about last time. Jason's like, I'm gonna make some calls. We'll get the security footage from the airport. I'm like, this is exactly what I was wondering why they didn't do last time because they knew certain places that. They were, so Jason should have, the, and Wit, between them, they have the clearance to find video footage, CCTV, of where they were, or find, like, flight records, stuff like that, that the government keeps. Jason worked for the NSA. They're the ones who are stealing, not our data, but, you know, they're stealing the U.S.'s data. CSIS takes ours. Um... Uh, um. So I thought it was interesting how this episode flipped. This episode was very different than part one. Cause the last... I actually think I like this episode a little bit more than part one, but so... I also like really like part one. I think I like them equally, but they're, they're about as different as Legend Part One and Legend Part Two <laughs> legacy, are from each other. Once again, or, um, sorry, yeah, yeah, Legacy. Not and quite that different. I think but... it's so weird, but like it doesn't work in that, but it works really well in this. Yeah, it was so, it was fascinating. Good job, Kathy. It played to all of Kathy's strengths really well the and it's like is so cute. it's so interesting how it flip-flops so many times because the episode starts out and it seems like intense like oh Wooten has amnesia what's going on was he attacked was is this something malicious and then it's like oh wait no it's normal penny's okay Wooten's just lost his memory somehow and they have to find her by putting together the clues ha 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 lol um and then it becomes intense again because it's like Wooten was drugged with an experimental drug this is serious penny could be in a terrible danger i'm like it would be hilarious then if it turns out that pablo the the fake employee that was all a red herring and Wooten accidentally drugged himself because he thought it was a sleeping pill on the flight and he accidentally took an experimental memory loss drug and it's like that does oh, not happen it wasn't intense after all it was just it was just slice of life after all. and it's just like they keep penny <laughs> penny figured out that she had the coin and she like unraveled the hat and she was like yeah i figured out that you're gonna do a drake adventure and i knew that i was being followed and i'm like and it i didn't realize it until the second time i listened to it but, like, that scuba diving gear that she references mm -hmm. two albums ago when she's packing for the vacation. And Connie's like, do you need that scuba diving gear? She's like, I don't know what we're going to do. And she's like, it's a good thing I packed this scuba diving gear. I was like, that came back. I can't believe it. Foreshadowing, I Victoria. I not until the second time I listened to it. That's amazing. So between that and the postcards, the amount of foreshadowing that went I into know. this two-parter. Kathy. Is such a good two-parter. Kathy. Who wrote the A Very Bassett Wedding? Was that Kathy? I believe so. 
Okay. I'm sure it was. Like, Let me check. The foreshadowing. I, I didn't notice that until I listened to it the second time. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's so great. And Penny Penny was awesome. She didn't show up a lot it was Kathy, yeah. in part two. But she was really awesome. I liked when she was like telling off the guys <laughs> who were like holding guns to her basically. And she was like, you gotta fight me and stuff like that. And everyone's like, calm down. Okay, she it was, was like a little chihuahua and it was amazing. It was so good because I, I was honestly, I was taken aback and I felt a little bad. Because I was like, I didn't give Penny enough credit by far in terms of figuring things me out. either. Because as much as Penny comes off as innocent and naive and trusting, it's like we have to remember... What she and we were just talking about this, like what she went through in the Green Ring conspiracy, and then like all the childish things, and how she was so determined to not let herself be taken in by anyone again, and be fooled mm-hmm. like that. And so and it's she like, also learned she is actually really smart because she knows like she was a like um, a helper at the college and stuff like that. So she has like all the art know how. She knows her art all history, the, all the and administrative stuff, like stuff, and she had like and all like she, lots of. Like, she um, more or less knew how to help like Eugene, so she has some basic science knowledge and stuff like. Well, that. she was she did, like aced chemistry in uh yeah, and no she also whatsoever. like learned how to do perfect body language reading more or less in about the span of an afternoon. <laughs> Enough to and, to freak Eugene out to high heaven. <laughs> yeah, and also Wooten. Um, yeah, and she she is really smart, and she pieced together some Green Ring stuff pretty quickly. And she, like, was able to do all this other stuff. And she probably is a fan of all the things that Wooten's ever created now. She's very and much like an... Think an- about how much stuff Wooten's created and how fast she would have gone through that in, like, the span of a week or something like that. She comic books are crazy. There are, like, parallel <laughs> universes and revivals and all this other, like stuff that branches off yeah especially when you you take wooten's mind and you apply that to how crazy comic books already are yeah um but yeah it's it's interesting because wooten and penny i don't really read comic books very often wooten and penny are very similar but i feel like penny even more so has like the parks and rec andy dwyer like genius savant kind of thing to her like Mm -hmm. the like naive and happy and like completely genius about these things but doesn't even realize like how genius she is about these things and like very cat like realize all these things but very casually is able to like know this stuff yeah. um yeah I, so. I, I try and write emlyn a little bit like that like you're like oh this character is so stupid and then and then he has like they, all this fashion and, and then all of a sudden they say like all these other things and they have all this knowledge about like this obscure thing that no one else understands and you're like how do you mm-hmm. what um so yeah, I find they talk. They finally, it's it took me a second because they were like, oh, it it was stolen one of one of twelve original coins from this museum of this like original prototype thing for this. I'm like, oh, that's kind of it's interesting. That's odd. They're like, it's basically the first penny, and I was like, <laughs> um, yeah, I was, um, I was. Uh, house sitting when I listened to this episode Mm -hmm. and I was like walking around doing things and then they said like and then at the point where I realized after they first started talking about the penny about like one minute later I realized that like to find a penny and to find a penny and I just stopped in my tracks and I was just like I kept on calling that it's just it's just find a penny there's no t-o in there I kept on calling that and it was wrong just you know what are you sure it's just find a penny are you sure? Yeah. I'm checking. <laughs> um, so they, like you said, they re- they watch the pool boy performance it's again, and that's when they pick on the Pablo thing. I'm like, I'm still salty about the lack of salt water in this video. They saved someone's life and mentioned a Penny's parents. Yeah. Um, I actually thought that that was going to be, like, because the guy's like, call in a favor anytime. And I thought the favor was going to be they were going to call him and be like, hey, Hmm. where did we go after we left there but then yeah, ended up being the helicopter thing. Yeah, I thought he was going to call him too. And then end up being the, the helicopter thing he called him for. Um, oh, that's what he called, okay. Yeah. Um, finding out that the snobby rich lady on the plane was part of an international crime syndicate who was specifically that was planted crazy. Is beside she voiced by the Penny? lady who voices, what's her face? I don't think she was, so I didn't hear at least in her voice, maybe she was. But um, the fact... No, I'm talking about the lady who we always... 
the one that's like Roz, whose name I should know, but I can't. Mitzi McCall, who plays Mrs. Kramer. Kramer. Yeah, Mrs. Kramer. I thought she was like Mrs. I Kramer, don't think so. Voice actor. When I, it's funny because when she first started talking on the plane, I thought she was Mrs. Kramer, and <laughs> I, I was for like, a second, "This is her worst." In part one, I did for half a second. I did think that was Mrs. Kramer, but yeah, um, I was thinking she's going like on a six-hour flight to Paris, and she's yeah. sitting next to Penny and Wooten. This is going to. That's be what amazing. I thought, and then I was like, "Oh, it's someone else." But no, uh, yeah. I doubt it's Mitzi McCall, especially because that is Mitzi McCall's natural voice is Mrs. Kramer. Okay. Um. Uh, yeah, finding out that that lady was actually part of a, like, an international crime syndicate who specifically planted awesome. beside Boot and Penny makes, uh, originally that scene was hilarious, but it became ten times funnier once you know she was a criminal who was just there to knit this hat and, like, smuggle it onto them, and they're just like, oh, like, they're just not, and they're just talking to her, and she's just trying to get through this, she's just like... Like it was. She's like, think about how much money you're gonna get. <laughs> it was hilarious in part one, but it's like ten times better in part two. I know. And we talked about and, we talked uh... about this last time about how we enjoyed all these little scenes throughout the honeymoon, even if they didn't necessarily play into the plot of the episode. It was nice that they all connected to the postcards, and then it turns out that each postcard they sent, each scene we heard last time that seemed unrelated to anything. Every one of those was an interaction with the victimizers, which is still a ridiculous name for a crime yeah. ring. Um, There's still the plot of Home Alone 3. But the fact that <laughs> each one of those postcards, they sent each one of the scenes we heard before, and I was like, oh, uh, this doesn't play into the thing, but it's still cool that we heard it. Now it's like they are all important, Victoria. There's foreshadowing inside the foreshadowing. It's, it was really well written. And I think it's okay that Kathy Buchanan plagiarized the plot of Home Alone 3. <laughs> Because everyone, I think, has, except for you, apparently, has um, willfully forgotten it, like what happens in it, because they don't want to think about that movie, because it's so terrible. I remember it very um, well. Tragically well, some might say. It's, it's probably because you were scarred as a small child. That's probably it. Um, yeah. That's how you go. You go to movies no one likes, and then you write scripts for them, and then you make them awesome. You know what? You know what I really this was this was the Hollywood remake of Home Alone Three and it was so good. <laughs> you know what I really liked in terms of Jason like doing his mystery secret agent shtick? Is what? that the whole the whole adorable thing about how the locations they went to was Penny's initials. Which was yeah, adorable. That's cute. Jason, that sounds like something Jason and Tasha would do. Jason was the one who figured it out. It was an acronym, and Jason was the one who figured out that there was an acronym going on. I was like, I'm so glad that happened. Also, thank you, Kathy, for the the fact that Jason did not feel the need to explain it to the audience again. This is what an acronym <laughs> is, you idiot. Again. Thank you for not doing that. And they mentioned Drake the Cosmic Hopper, and now we're getting, we yeah. just found out we're getting a new Drake episode. That's, that's why I was so excited when you... Yeah. That. Um, Once again, I'm, I'm really glad that Drake is a thing. I was like re listening to Drake. I've re listened to that episode so many times. It is such a good episode. I'm really hoping, I know I've said this in the past, but like I really want Drake the Cosmic Copper to either just stay at the level of like greatness that it's at or improve. I don't want it to be like Captain Absolutely where it went downhill as time went on because that made me really sad because the first like Captain Absolutely episode is so freaking good with like Darren and stuff like that. And it's, uh... I, uh, I'm really glad... Drake Cosmic Copper is a really good episode. I'm really glad that we still are getting a steady feed of episodes like this that keep Jason sated from having to return to the NSA. I know. And I'm like, just feed his addiction a little bit. Of exactly. Time. Yeah. And just, just give him, if you don't go total withdrawal, he just, won't go. Exactly. He just needs us. the little, little yeah. sip, little sip, the first draft of that feast as uh, screw tape would say. He won't be gone. And then he won't be like, Townsend won't be coming back on the Disney Cruise episode, and he won't be like, hey guys, have anything for me? I just came back from the Disney vault, and they had, like, me in some old Disney movies. Did you know that? Yeah, I was gonna My say. voice was different in Mary Poppins or something. I don't think he was in Mary Poppins. He but... was not in Mary Poppins. <laughs> I'm trying to That's think. That's why his voice I'm was different. Yeah, he's like, he has the, he got hit on the head with the new Beauty and the Beast. He's like, Dad, your voice sounded different in that one. Um, <laughs> you were an actual horse in that one. Um, the truest line of this episode 
uh, truer words have never been spoken by the Bastage, which is, everything is better with pockets. Which is like, Wait, if he's in the Disney vault, then he'd hear Owl, and he'd be like, what is this? It's Andre Stoika's Owl. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm saying that for people who don't know, I know you know And that. Hal Smith did voice matching for Andre for Owl on occasion. Which is, mm-hmm. I believe that's the original reason that they contacted Andre about being wit, I'm is because they knew that Hal had done voice matching for him on Winnie the Pooh. Um, yeah, everything is better with pockets. I'm like, it's a good line. I'm like, Victoria I, will appreciate the like, heck out of this line. <laughs> I, I agree with that, um, except for dresses. I'm like the only person, I'm the only girl in the world I know who doesn't like pockets on dresses. Because I just, I don't like the way it makes the dress poof out. I think it It depends weird. on how they're made, though, on on how well it's concealed and... That's true. One of my grad dresses actually did have pockets in it, and you couldn't tell. Yeah. And I did. If there's use like it hidden like pockets, my coat number that don't change the like form, that. don't change the form, and you can't yeah. see the opening unless you know where it the is. The reason the reason I'm partial to them not being in dresses is because I've just had too many dresses where it makes it poof out a lot, and I've only had one where it doesn't change the shape it's at a, all. A phrase you'd never think you'd hear someone say: "I've had too many dresses with pockets in them." It's and like, by too many, rare, I think I mean three. What a rare and, life that you live, Victoria. <laughs> what magical world you live in where you've had too many women's clothing with pockets in it. Um, I think I had, like, I don't know if it was you or some other guy friend or someone, but they they got a pair of jeans. No, it was you. It was you, and you got your, like, Robert Lutes jacket, and it had the fake pockets in it. Yeah, yeah. And you got so mad, and you're like, welcome to the life of being a woman. Yeah, I was like... I have no sympathy for you. I know. As soon as I... Compl- even before the words came out of my mouth, I knew I was being like... It was like the most privileged thing I've ever said. <laughs> what? Like, this doesn't have pockets? Or yeah. Like what a travesty. That? What an outrage. Um, so, Penny... Like, how dare you? We come back to the end of the episode. Like we said, Penny, she's like, oh, yeah, I figured all this stuff out. I was like, wow. I was like, you know what? Honestly, this should make sense. I didn't give enough Penny enough credit. I feel bad that I underestimated her like this. And then we find out she figured all this stuff out. But she thinks that Wooten set it all up as a treat for her as, like, set up a mystery, like, um, train ride style in the last episodes. And she should have been in the last episode. She would have figured out that Margaret Hofstetter stuff right away. Hoffmeyer. Um, Hoffmeyer. I still love that I made that one post. Devin can show it here. Where it was that um, codenames thing from Parks and Rec. And um, then I got... And it was... I've, I've said it before on the podcast. Um, Eugene said like, okay, we're going to do code names. I'm Eagle Well, I put it... I showed it, Victoria. Yeah, okay. Um, so um, I got a reply on it once, and it said, wait, when did Eugene do Mayor Margaret? And I was laughing for like 10 minutes. And then I was like, no, this is a different character. This is a character that was, from the last I mean, I have some posts with like 17, 18,000 notes on them. Nothing either of us have ever made remotely compares to that post. It's so oh like my original post yeah. or the response no to your original post okay thank you i i just i love that post so much i think it only has like 26 notes or something like that but i still think it's really um so yeah so penny honestly as soon as penny was like oh like that was so sweet that you did this whole thing the first thing that popped into my mind was olaf's line from frozen or not his line but you know on his line about him, like should we tell him don't you dare like that's honestly i did not thought i i did not think that they were gonna tell penny i thought they were gonna let her penny keep had on like a mental breakdown keep on believing she found out that she was actually being followed was, by people with like actual guns yeah. who were legitimately dangerous i thought she was gonna be kind of catatonic and be like oh Wooten, i think i need and to then go she was back just to gonna our walk hotel off room the pier back into the water <laughs> yeah she just walks backwards into the pool sinking into the water can can i just say um that i was kind of bummed that Wooten wasn't gonna come with them because i was like he's her husband he should get to go and then when he like showed up on the airplane i was like oh this is like the rom-com crap that i'm falling for it oh my god he shows up in the airplane they're there in the pool and he's just like i bet it was 
what would have been smart is if he'd shown up in a helicopter. Then he goes into the water right after her, and then he sings them in the deep end for you properly for once. Maybe that's that's why he's like, bring scuba gear. He's like, I'm gonna sing, I'm gonna serenade you from under the water. Oh, that would be sweet. They're, they they so quickly, so so quickly have become my favorite couple in all of Odyssey. Chris's and they are so cute. Chris's episode, uh, her wrap up was very strange in terms of the theme of the episode. I th think I know what she was trying to get at, but it was a very convoluted way of giving the episode theme. It was very what much was like... Again? It was very much like For the Birds, where they focused more on giving a wrap-up that the mat was similar in terms of, like, the actual content in the, of the episode and the name of the episode rather than what's actually going on. Like, For the Birds is the worst wrap-up of any episode because it's just Chris giving bird puns, and the actual wrap-up says nothing about the theme of the episode in any way that has anything to do with what the actual episode was. This one, she starts talking about, like, the the parable of, like, the tithing and, like, the woman losing the penny oh, and rejoicing yeah. over finding it. I'm like, okay, it's about finding a penny, yes, but she never really solidly tied it back to the episode. I'm like, I guess it's about... What was the theme again? I'm like, like I guess thing? the point is that Wooten lost Penny and he rejoiced greatly at finding her again. And, and then she talks about, like, it's the same way as, like, the angels in heaven when, like, the way they rejoice when someone's saved. I'm like... That is that's that's not what happened in this episode. I'm like the the best thing I can do is like the point is how valuable Penny is to Wooten. That's like when we lose someone like Penny lost Wooten and the value, the effort he put into trying to get Penny back and the joy he had at regaining her is the same joy as when uh when we come to God that he has. I was like, I guess that's the best explanation. Uh but the episode overall is like mystery romance adventure it was a great well-rounded episode like double layered foreshadowing from the previous season and as you pointed out the season even before that it was important to the plot it was, so good. It was that was like a phenomenal episode kathy absolutely five out of five five out of five i agree with everything devin just said it was so good penny mutton yeah so it was cute. like everything was perfect except for okay. the pool boys Thought four point nine 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 because there was not any underwater singing. That runs to a five, anyways. But yeah, it does. Um, yeah, it's like that was weird. But apart, it's like it's amazing that we had an episode that was so solidly romance, but also so solidly mystery and adventure that did it so well. And it was like very different episodes, but they fit so well together. And the foreshadowing and all this, it was really good. It was so good. Excellent. Excellent. 10 out of 10 for the remake of Home Alone 3. So. I wish I wish you did, like, the literal title, parody title things for the album ones and not just <laughs> the OAC ones. So that this could be Hollywood's remake of Home Alone 3. Um, th yeah, Home Alone 3.5. Or 3.1, I guess. Um, it's like the patch. The patch of Home Alone 3. Is it Alex finds a penny or something like that in a race car. So next time, obviously, we're continuing on with album 63. We'll be talking about Friend or Foe and Have a Heart. I'm very excited for those. Uh... Um, <laughs> this is an excellent season so far. It's, it's such a good season. So... Everyone go listen to the next two episodes. So, Go do it. until then, thank you for joining us on Our Side of the YouTube. I've been Devin Francis, also known as Leonard Meltzner. Uh, go, go listen to Have a Heart. Go listen. And uh, you've been watching the Adventures in Odyssey Oddcast.